What's going on everybody? Thanks again for tuning in to our YouTube channel. Really appreciate you guys stopping by. This video here is trying to break down the difference between aluminum, stainless, and chrome. So I get this question a lot. Everybody's always asking me, what's the difference between aluminum, stainless, and chrome? How do I tell which one's which? Honestly, I don't know how to explain this. I'm gonna try in this video, but every time somebody asks, I'm terrible. I mean, terrible at answering this question, but I hope you watch the video and I'm gonna try anyways. Um, aluminum, aluminum I can just tell by looking at it. Um, aluminum's a softer metal. Um, usually like the wheels on your truck are aluminum, especially if you're talking about a semi. Very few wheels on a semi are chrome. Um, you can get chrome wheels on a semi. You're not going to find stainless steel wheels on a semi. Um, it's fairly rare. Um, I think I've maybe seen one set in my entire career and I've been doing this 20 years. Um, stainless steel wheels just don't happen. There'd be stupid heavy, um, nobody'd really want them. Years back there used to be steel wheels, a lot of people still run painted steel wheels, so that's a possibility. Um, but aluminum just even looks completely different. Um, it's usually dinged and dented up. Um, you can get that on stainless as well, but stainless is a whole lot harder. So like when you look at a bumper, most bumpers are not aluminum. Most bumpers are either made out of stainless steel or chrome plated steel. And you can also get chrome plated stainless steel. Um, but most bumpers are not aluminum. Unless you're buying an older bumper um, from older trucks or you're buying a cheap bumper, most really cheap bumpers are made out of aluminum. Um, most more expensive bumpers are made out of either stainless steel or chrome plated steel. Um, chrome is a plating process, so it's just a coating that's on something whether it's steel or brass or nickel. Um, chrome is just a coating. Like this uh, fire extinguisher here, this specific one is just stainless steel. Um, most things that are stainless steel is you can buy stainless steel grills for Peterbilts, um, but most Kenworth grills are either um, stainless steel or chrome plated. Now this is the most difficult one. I've seen a lot of people try and sand down their grills and wonder why they turn yellow when they buff them. It's because you sand it through the chrome and you're literally exposing the nickel plating that's underneath the chrome. Um, even though they sound like metal, they might not be metal. All that is is the chrome plating over the top that's up, making it appear like it's metal. Chrome is a type of metal, correct. So, telling the difference between stainless and chrome, um, it's just visually. Honestly, between aluminum, stainless, and chrome, it's all visual um, until you go and polish it. But polishing chrome with a buffer isn't the best idea. Most times, chrome plating is very thin. Um, most cheaper places only chrome plate three times. Some of the nicer chrome platings are seven times. Um, so if you only have a triple plated coating uh, or single plated coat, if you hit that with a buffer, especially like uh, an orange airway or a yellow airway and not a white or a super soft, you can take that coating off rather quickly and not know that you took it off. Um, it'll still be shiny because the nickel underneath it when you polish it will shine still like chrome. But in a week when it starts getting wet and it starts getting washed or it starts drying out, it'll start turning yellow or gold. Um, so be careful. If you're going to polish a bumper, make sure that it's actually stainless. Now, I've had a lot of people tell me recently here, well, it can't be stainless because a magnet doesn't stick to it or a magnet does stick to it. The old rules for stainless and chrome and steel and aluminum don't apply much anymore. Um, the current stainless that's in the market is fairly watered down. It's not like it used to be. You used to be able to tell the difference between aluminum and stainless by telling if it was magnetic. Um, stainless steel used to be magnetic because of the 
the stuff that was mixed in to make stainless steel. Um, but not anymore. Since we don't have a whole lot of welders in the industry anymore, people found it was easier to just make everything direct bolt-on. And by making it bolt-on, they didn't need welders anymore, so they didn't need high-quality stainless. High-quality stainless is all they needed for people that were gonna be welding stuff. And if you were using a cheap stainless and you were trying to weld it, it wasn't gonna weld very good. Well, now that we don't have a whole lot of welders and everything's just direct bolt-on, we don't need high quality stainless anymore was I think the mentality behind it. So a lot of the new stainlesses aren't even magnetic and they're very difficult and a pain, pain, pain to polish. I absolutely hate polishing this new stainless because it just does not work out very well. So we all know if you've watched previous videos that there's different processes for polishing aluminum and stainless. On chrome, I never personally recommend anything more than hand polish. So if you're working on chrome, you should only be hand polishing it with a chrome polish. Uh, there's many different types of chrome polishes out there. Um, you guys all know my recommendations. I sell them on my website, goshanon.com forward slash shop. Gotta get my shameless plug in there. But, um, you see all my recommendations there. I don't sell anything that I don't personally recommend. Um, Chrome, it's just a plating process. Like I said, if you go to Buffett, you could risk stripping it off, which is why if you hit it with an SOS pad or um, steel wool, a lot of times it scratches really easy because it's just a coating. It's just like running an SOS pad or steel wool across your paint. You wouldn't run it across your paint, would you? No. Is it gonna take bugs off? Sure, but you also run the risk of scratching it. And stainless, once you've scratched it, buffing it out isn't an easy process. And like I said, you risk stripping the chrome off if you buff it. That's just all there is to it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You do run that risk anytime you buff chrome. Now somebody told me the other day, they're like, well I talked to my chrome shop, they buff chrome all the time. Yes, they're buffing it before they do the plating process. And once they do the plating process, most of these chrome shops I've been to, are simply hand polishing or wiping it down when they're done just to get off some excess residues. They're not physically buffing their chrome once it's done. Once it's done, it's done. It gets shipped out after it's inspected and it's golden. As long as the chrome plating process laid down smooth, they're shipping it out straight from that. Most of them are not buffing the actual chrome plating. So, aluminum. This keg here, it's an old keg. They do also make stainless kegs, but this one here is an aluminum one. I could tell because of how soft it was and how it sounds. A stainless one is real pingy, and an aluminum one is real tingy. Pingy and tingy, that's a German thing. I get that from my dad. We got issues. Nonetheless, I hope this helps. I hope you guys can try to discern a little bit the difference between aluminum, stainless, and chrome. This is aluminum. This is stainless, that's chrome. Break it down one more time for you. Most wheels on trucks are either aluminum or steel. If they're painted, they're steel. Not many people paint over aluminum. If you do, stop doing that. It's a pain for me to take off later. Now, if they're bare, they could also have a clear coat on them. They could be DuraBrite or AccuShield. Um, they could have a clear coat over those wheels. But that's a completely different story. We make a video for that as well, how to strip that off and how to polish it back out. Um, most tanks on trucks are aluminum. Um, if you get some Canadian trucks, they make some stainless steel tanks up there. There are also companies down here that make stainless wraps for fuel tanks. Um, so fuel tanks are either aluminum or stainless. I think I've seen maybe a handful of chrome fuel tanks in my life. And a lot of those are on older trucks, like 359, some older Max. Uh, it's pretty rare. Um, air cleaners on trucks, I've never once seen an aluminum air cleaner um, that wasn't painted. Um, some of the older 359s have painted ones. Most of those are steel if they're painted. Very few of them are, polished alu are uh, polishable aluminum. But 99 out of the, I'd probably say 9,000 out of 9,001 air cleaners I've seen in my life are stainless steel. Um, grills are, n the majority of those are aluminum if you're talking about a Peterbilt. Um, very few of those are stainless or chrome, but you do need to be careful. Some of those um, grills that are in Peterbilts, 
that look like they're stainless, sometimes they're chrome. If you wonder, ask the owner. The owner nine times out of 10 will know if that grill is stainless or chrome. Um, chrome grills are quite a bit more expensive than the stainless ones and the customer will usually know because they've replaced it themselves. Um, you don't want to try and buff a chrome grill. It just would not end well for you. Um, Kenworths, those are almost always stainless or chrome. I've very rarely seen an aluminum grill on a Kenworth unless we're talking old A models. And even then, it's usually just the emblem in the center that's aluminum. Um, what else do we got? Um, mirrors. Mirrors are almost always stainless or chrome. Um, diamond plate boxes. I've still yet to see any stainless steel diamond plate boxes. All diamond plate to me that I've seen personally has been aluminum. So if you've got a question about aluminum, stainless, or chrome, and you don't know what it is, send me a picture. I'll try and help break it down. Uh, of course, you guys can find my contact info on all of my channels, not just here on YouTube, but on Instagram and Facebook. I have my personal cell phone number attached to all of those, so you can physically get a hold of me anytime you need to. And I try to get back to everybody in a pretty timely manner. Um, I'm sorry this video got a little long. I know a bunch of my videos have gotten a little long and I'm long-winded and repeat myself a lot, but I get these questions a lot. And the reason why I repeat them a lot is because I want people to remember um, answering everybody's questions. Some days I get 50 to 100 questions in a day and I'm trying to help make these videos as thorough as I can to try and cut down on some of those. Uh, it's very, very difficult to keep up with everybody sometimes. So. Appreciate you guys watching these videos. Click that subscribe button down below. And of course, everything you need to find, you can find on goshineon.com forward slash shop. Thank you, have a great day.